All right, we are live for a Friday edition of the People's Talk Show. Kind of forgot what day it was, <laughs> but uh, excited to be back. What a what a hell of a week! Uh, a lot of negative negative sentiment on the dollar and distractions thrown our way are increasing. Gold and silver is doing pretty good right now. Uh, but Mario, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Mike, and you? I I'm doing pretty well, man. Doing pretty well. End of the week, and uh, my, we're right, in my opinion, at the beginning of everything that you know. We, you, you and I both have been talking about for years in reference to the shift away from the Western dominance into something new, and to hear about how they're trying to iron out the kinks and work things out towards their solution for, I guess, having creating alternatives is coming quite interesting, I must say. But uh, yeah, so here we are, end of the week, lots of things unfolded. And so throughout the week, there's been more, you know, developments between Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, Brazil. I mean, you name it. They're all out here making deals, signing memorandums and really trying to ramp up the uh, move away from the dollar. So we're in the midst of the de-dollarization process. So I guess let's just start off with I want to just, uh, as I mentioned beforehand, go through four or five headlines and just 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 look at the overarching tone. And then we'll get into some of our thoughts and other developments and whatnot. And so, and of course, we can't not not talk about precious metals uh, in comparison to the other fiats. But all right, so uh, here we have just uh, a couple of days ago, BRICS stations offer a new world order as an alternative to the West. And so that's uh, from Frontline out of the out of the Hindu. Next article here: the old world order for crude oil is disappearing. Next one we got from India Forbes, Petro Yuan or Petro Bricks, the need for better alternative currencies to break dollar dominance. And then we have key Asian bloc looking to dump dollar and euro. And so, Mario, like how obvious is that tone as to way the world is viewing the dollar right now? <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> no, no. And I think it's been building up for many years. And uh, that's why I've been speaking about the uh kind of demise of the petrodollar since like 2016 to 2017 mm -hmm. on my channel. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that the dollar is going to disappear. It just means there's going to be less demand for dollars. And I know right. the, the dollar system, uh, the financial system uh, uh, worldwide, uh, the dollar is very important. But these countries, uh, especially in what is now being called the global south, they want an alternative because, uh, and even in Africa, they've been um, basically, they haven't been treated on an equal footing. And uh, surprisingly, some people might might say, oh, you're naive, but I, I truly believe that the Chinese, the Russians, the Brazilians, the Indians, they, they want everyone to have an equal say in this, mm -hmm. and which is something you don't have under a dollar system. Right. Right, I agree. And and just to be clear, like as you mentioned, and so I've been talking about this. I mean, the whole idea of rethinking the dollar came about because I, I anticipated at some point the world would rethink the current structure. And of course, we're in the midst of that now. And so just to be clear, the USD is not going anywhere. All this stuff happening out east is not to uh, remove or completely el eliminate the dollar. It's not about replacing a dollar. It's about providing alternatives. And in time, things will unfold and take care of themselves, similar to the way of the British pound. When it was a reserve currency, event occurred throughout the 30, 40, 50, 60 years, the shift took place, and here we are now with the new reserve currency. So it's going to be a long, drawn-out process, but it's going to be ugly along the way. And we're in the beginning phase of seeing how they're maneuvering to come up with alternatives. And so we're going to dive into that right now. So the next article I want to bring up uh, happens to be from Sputnik, and it's as of today. And so, of course, the BRICS seem to be leading the way towards this alternative push, but it says BRICS working on a new form of currency, state Duma uh, deputy chairman. And so what that currency looks like, it's yet to be determined, but it just makes it clear that it says here, the transition to settlements in national currencies is the first step the next one is providing circulation of digital or any other form of fundamentally new currency in the nearest future. And so I kind of hint at that that digital new currency is probably going to be CBDC related or something of that nature. But we'll see. He says, I think that the BRICS leader summit, the readiness uh, to realize the project will be announced. Such works are underway. And so I'm not sure if that's this coming up in August or the next one after that or. 
but whatever. But clearly, they're working on it, or at least they're telling us they're working on things. And it's my suspicion that they're a lot further along than what we'll know until it's actually time, because they're probably testing things right now or maneuvering things on a, on a on a beta side rather than you know ready having it ready for the public. But what are you thinking with this statement here? That you think is this summit next summit, or, or what, what are you thinking? Well, I think uh, they're not really thinking right now of a BRICS currency. They're thinking more of dealing with each other in in, in their own fiat currencies. Right. And that will eventually probably cr create a problem. It's not going to be smooth. And I'm not going to I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. But uh, what it will do, though, is shift a lot of demand away from the dollar. But eventually, uh, I think the uh, monetary asset that they're going to have uh, to uh, back this system will have to be gold because uh, because of trade imbalances. Uh, some countries are going to be, let's say, Saudi Arabia is going to be stuck with a yuan that it can't get rid of. And another country that wants to uh, buy oil from Saudi Arabia but might not want the yuan. But everyone right. takes gold. So I think gold mm -hmm. will be very important eventually. But uh, there was an interview uh, by Pepe Escobar of the Credo. He interviewed mm -hmm. a, a Russian economist that is involved in all of this and the digital uh, gold currency. And, and he said that, uh, and this was uh, March 13th, the interview, and he said yeah. they needed uh, the, uh, the joining of China. China had to be behind this. And the week later, of course, we saw Xi going to, uh, be, uh, to uh, Moscow and then when he left, he had that chat with uh, Putin saying we we've, we've made uh, we're making the biggest decision uh, in the last hundred years. So uh, I think that China is going to play ball with this new currency. And like uh, that uh, guy there, Glazayev said, it's not going to be smooth sailing. Um, and uh, yes, probably the best place to be will be gold and silver, whether you are uh, in the West holding dollars or pounds, or even if you are in the BRICS countries, you might want to have gold and silver as well, because it's not going to be smooth sailing. I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect system, but um, they want to move more into a, a financial trade system that's based on real goods. Yes, there will be a currency, uh, which I think will be mostly gold backed uh, away from what we have now, which is a complete like a Tower of Babel financial high system where central banks just uh, create hundreds of billions uh, a week or overnight uh, yeah i think the, the rest of the world <laughs> they've woken up to the fact that uh, these people just print all this these reserves and buy things for from us valuable things we want that to stop all right good point there now just to hint back on more of the developments so you sent me this so I, I just scanned through it but this Sergey Glazev guy you know talking about the road to financial multipolarity will be will be long and rocky and so with this here a lot of it's centered on the countries in the e the the EU the e European Union area uh the e EC and things of that nature and so you got Russia uh, uh Belarus Kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan Armenia and all those nations working uh, towards their it's not, Europe, it's not European Union. It's Eurasian uh, Union, I think. Yeah, it's most good point, of the good point. old Soviet countries. And, and he he notes as well that they need China to be on board. And he mm -hmm. he says that uh, unless there's consensus, maybe from Russia and China, you can't. He said he, we can't force these countries to do this. But I, I right. think it will happen because the BRICS countries like Brazil. And we've seen other countries wanting to enjoy, join the BRICS, and we've even seen, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia now wants to join the the Shanghai Co Cooperation uh, mm -hmm. Organization. <laughs> Iran is part of that. So even old enemies are joining together because uh, maybe they've realized that uh, being divided uh, plays right into the empire's hands. It's like maybe at our level as well, maybe yeah. being divided as individuals plays right into the hands of the, the people in charge. And, and that's what they want. And I think um, I could be wrong, you know, because some people say, oh, are the BRICS countries, uh, are they part of the BIS? Well, I think a lot of them deal with the BIS, mm -hmm. but uh, 
Russian Central Bank, for example, they've been suspended since March last year. So uh, who's to say they might not leave the BIS? There's a right. I think around since 2014, it's called the New Development Bank. It's like a mm -hmm. BRICS nation a bank, uh, a little bit like the World Bank. So they could uh, yeah. gravitate towards uh, that that kind of institution instead of the BIS. Right. And so that's, that's a good point. So the BRICS have already set up a parallel system that mimics the old, you know, World Bank, G G7 type of structure. And they have their own rules for that game there. And, and they're doing both at the same time while developing one. And they're extending invitations to the rest of the world. If you want an equality, if you want a chance to let your, your voice be heard and not be not have a single currency, you know, weaponized over you and enslaving you, then perhaps consider joining the BRICS. And so I actually saw a tweet last night and I was talking about this on my little rant about uh, the South African foreign minister talked about applications were submitted for uh, consideration for the additional countries. And on that list was the ones we know about UAE, Saudi Arabia, uh, Nigeria, Argentina and one or two others. But then Mexico was on that list. And so I tried to scramble to find the actual source from that. But it was shared around enough to where I'm like, well, you know, if you just throw in Mexico, it wouldn't surprise me just because all those other ones are valid. And so I'm thinking like right now, it's the mad dash to join this new union, which is creating a whole multi-polar world that uh, China and Russia seems to be spearheading. And so one, one last little key I want to mention that I was thumbing through. There's this article here uh, in reference to what was being said. And I would just quote what he says. It says, I had initially proposed some talking points revolving around discussions between the EAEU and China on designing a new gold commodities backed currency bypassing the dollar and how it will be realistically possible to have an EAEU Shanghai cooperation same SEO and BRICS plus to adopt the same currency design. And so yeah. it's good to say if, if he's talking about this, this is not new whatsoever, but the fact that it's being talked about mainstream is like, okay, I would assume they're a lot further along than what, you know, yeah. we will know until something is actually presented to the world and will that be like that ultimate shock moment? Like when if, wow. if a second opportunity comes on a scene like that and then they say next week we're open to receive payments or trade or whatever using this, you get a discount. If you, you know, you know how, how it usually goes to incentivize people. Would that be like a media shock to the markets or what? Yeah. And I mean, they're still in denial. I, I think uh, Fox and CNN have uh, twigged on to all this uh, development finally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh and I think, though, uh, even people in the alternative, some people still poo-poo this. They think that the dollar will always be, you know, essential. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will be essential for Americans and people that do business with the United States. Uh, you know, uh, China will still use dollars because if they buy anything from the U.S. But what will happen is that countries won't have to hold uh, dollar reserves uh, to buy their oil. And that's really important because oil is the lifeblood uh, of the economy because you, without oil, you don't have any energy. I know <laughs> these crazy globalists want, want to move into the, these renewables. and uh, But uh, I, I think uh, petroleum and oil, oil, oil products are going to be around for, for many, many decades to come. So can you imagine uh, not having to hold as, as many dollars? P people will probably right. hold gold and and that's why i think last year was the 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 most uh since the bretton woods is created that central banks bought gold the most gold that was bought was last year and even in 2021 brazil almost uh doubled its gold reserves so uh, i think people will rather uh these countries are gonna accumulate more and more gold yes they're gonna start out uh do, using each other's currencies and they're, they're already doing that um, mm -hmm. and, um, and even bartering for example I've seen that Sri Lanka and Iran have done deals where um, I think it's Sri Lanka or it could be Burma sorry Burma Burma mm -hmm. sends tea, tea to Iran and Iran sends oil to Burma so <laughs> this is already happening yeah and I think just the proof that it's already happening is just look at how close Saudi Arabia and China has become having signed all these deals over the last several months. And as of recent talking about uh, 
utilizing the yuan for oil refinery developments on top of all the oil settlement as well in the yuan and so like there is an alternative right now when you have saudi arabia the key key country that is the head of the opec nations it's like okay it's, it's not too much longer that all the other nations will probably follow suit and to where china signs a deal with opec in and of itself for yuan settlement as an alternative not not a replacement just an alternative and there you have two mediums that you can use and the question is like you know which one would you be incentivized to use more of in the beginning of this shift towards the east and of course that would be the yuan or whatever else they come up with so yeah interesting times man what do you guys thoughts other, on that one? yeah i just wanted to touch upon though something different because like mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've heard jim rickard say oh uh, the dollar is still going to be king because uh, we have a really deep uh, government debt market, treasury market. The whole world deals in it. But the only reason the world deals in, in U.S. Treasury is because the U.S. has been running huge trade deficits uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, ever since the 60s. <laughs> and uh, the only way to finance those deficits is to sell paper to the rest of the world. So yeah. uh, I would say a world that's more based on reality, on real goods, uh, we're not going to need a, a huge government uh, bond market. Uh, maybe China might have one, but look at uh, Russia. They don't even have 20% uh, debt to GDP, national debt. So I just wanted to say that, you know, the, we, to have a, a system going, a trade world system going parallel to the dollar, doesn't mean to say just because you don't have a liquid, deep, uh, treasury market for other countries that it won't work. And I would argue that the, the U.S. treasury market has been highly illiquid for many years. They, they're having problems with liquidity uh, because, well, because the supply is so huge. <laughs> and uh, apart from the central banks, there's not too many buyers of uh, treasuries. Right. I think as we get further into this banking contagion and all the scrambling behind the scenes with central banks to try to basically pour, as I say, pour more gasoline on a burning fire with the currencies, uh, we're going to have a sovereign debt issue and it's going to be exposed and governments will be exposed as well. And no one's going to want to hold anybody's liabilities. And that's why I think the major part of the shift happens to be out of a debt based structure into a commodity based structure, because that's all about reestablishing trust. Like you bring something to the table, then we can have some fair negotiations because it won't be lopsided. You put something up, we put something up, we got business. So that's where we're heading. I'll give, I'll give you an example. I mean, I remember uh, many years in Switzerland, uh, <laughs> like uh, there were little shops where, you know, like the bakery, <laughs> uh, you could go there and buy loads of stuff and uh, you pay at the end of the month. So the guy just wrote down what you, you owed. And, you know, everyone paid. It was a small place. But can you imagine if you kept trying to uh, tell the guy, oh, just can you just roll over that? You know, keep rolling over that. And that's what the United States, unfortunately, has been doing for 50 years after, you know, since Nixon closed the gold window temporarily. Yeah, <laughs> um, temporarily. They've, they've been buying uh, real things with paper. And uh, I think uh, the rest of the world has woken up to it. Maybe yeah. not the West, because no, maybe not the UK, because the UK just rides along, you know, like a mini me. Same system. system. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little uh, barnacle on the back of a whale. Yeah. Now, now, speaking of, you know, people catching on, of course, the Eastern Front happens to be the primary ones holding the biggest bag of liabilities. And there's a uh, interesting trajectory of what has been, you know, trade taking place. So this is apparently China has, you know, the lowest amount of holdings since 2010. And of course that ramp up was probably due to, you know, help me finance the world after the financial crisis. But this trajectory here, you know, it's, it's, it's I don't see this going back up anytime soon. Or, or is, there, is, there, is, there, is there something that could take place where China would want to then get back into the Ponzi scheme of holding debt for nothing? Or, or what are you thinking? Well, I guess uh, this uh, chart would have descended a lot quicker in the last mm -hmm. year and a half if the Fed hadn't raised rate as much as it, it has. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless uh, the Fed's prepared to go into double digits, I don't see that going back up mm -hmm. anytime soon. I'm sure, you know, China might still hold a few hundred billion uh, eventually, 
but uh, they'll be holding a lot more gold and maybe some in the beginning now they'll be holding some rubles some uh, uae currency or some rupees some reais i mean we saw that uh, china and brazil announced this week that they're going to be dealing in their own currencies which i think is quite quite significant uh, because yeah. brazil brazil is like a it's a fairly big country uh, but even small countries it doesn't matter because i, I saw kenya you know all, all these little countries it's like a you add them all up and it makes a difference and people don't realize that yeah good point there uh let me see here so keep it moving uh let's talk about this uh this golden ruble um i didn't get a chance to read that but you sent me an article let me bring this up here um what was some of this is uh looks like from january but what was i mean i'm sorry yeah. it's for I, itself I, but you mentioned I, ruble I, I don't think that's too different than the one i showed you about that uh glazayev so we yeah. don't have to really go through through this but, really no problem so let's get into some of the uh events uh, happening as far as the distractions <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, here we have Trump indictment uh, thrust a div uh, divided into a new chapter of chaos. How timely could this be? And so, like man, when the banks started to have their issues, that's when the initial announcement of "Oh, Trump is going to be indicted," and then of course they said Monday, then Tuesday. Okay, here we are now, week into it, nothing's happening, and and even him and his team, not necessarily going along with it, because I'm assuming he has to take it serious because it's coming from you know the DA in New York. But it's like, okay, I guess I saw the most recent tweet saying he's going to turn his stuff in on Tuesday or. And so it's like, okay, is this literally the design to stir up his fan base, which happens to be a good portion of our country now that Biden has really much, you know, exposed himself to being uh, just a, a Eastern puppet. But anyway, so the, the, this literally will this will this, will this do the trick to distract people enough, or will they still be concerned with the trust of their funds and banks? <laughs> well, I think it will distract a lot of people, but yeah. not. Not you and me, and uh, hopefully uh, a lot of the viewers here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, just because um, I think, once again, it's a very minor, I wouldn't say it's even, it's not a, okay, I'll say a minor distraction in comparison to the things that could come if the banking situation continues to spread. So, of course, Charles Schwab is having some issues on this side. Everybody's underwater and taking losses. And so my question is like, you know, how does this play into the spring with these losses? Like, you know, does it get to the point where more GCFs are threatened and literally they have to create some more tools or or what? Because the only thing they do is continue to just paper over things. But when will that not work, in your opinion? Well, if you remember uh, back in 08, I think it was in March that uh, Bear Stearns would have collapsed, collapsed if uh, JP Morgan hadn't taken over it. And, uh, and then it took about six months for Lehman to collapse and the whole system to implode. So yeah, I think right now they're gonna, the central banks are gonna, are trying to paper over it. We saw the Fed's balance sheet has started going back up and um, yeah, and they must be doing a lot of stuff in the background, uh, behind the scenes we don't know about. They, they've, uh, the Fed started these new daily swap, uh, swap transactions which basically mean uh, the Bank of England can create as many pounds out of thin air, exchange them for dollars out of thin air so that mm -hmm. they can take the dollars and, uh, you know, and buy and buy the pounds to keep the pound strong uh, and vice versa. So they're already like, uh, and this is all off balance sheet. So uh, who knows? Uh, it could happen in the spring uh while well, we are in the spring but uh if everything could unravel or they they might be able to keep it uh going until the fall like mm -hmm. october, september october time uh, i mean if you look back before march uh the huge crisis that we had we had another one of these fires that they were able to put out was here mm -hmm. in the uk uh, the guilt market collapse and the mm -hmm. defined uh, benefit private pension system almost evaporated. So they saved that. And now we've had another fire, which is uh, SVB and the other banks. Uh, will there be another fire right away? Will there be a, a, just uh, fires all over? Who knows? It's difficult mm. to say. 
But yeah. again, that's why you need to keep stacking, in my opinion. You want to be out of this system as much as possible. You, uh, I'm not saying you have to get out completely, um, but uh, <laughs> unless you believe everything's fine and you, you trust uh, the central banks and governments to be doing the right thing. Uh, and one of the key takeaways that I got is just give it time. Like literally, you know, within time, you mentioned like six months after. And so it takes time. Of course, no doubt they're scrambling on the back end trying to, you know, plug holes in this monetary policy scheme of piping system that's literally, I'm sure it's bursting all throughout the damn world because everybody who holds treasuries over the last, what, year or two plus is taking losses. So it's like, okay, who do you pick and choose to bail out? quietly through these you know swaps and things these backdoor deals and so we got the pension funds they're taking losses so it's like okay it's, there's no stopping it now it's more so how can they contain it as best they can before another fire it becomes obvious to the public but along the way as you mentioned precious metals we we got to just jump on that because uh, so here we are now let me bring, bring on the screen here we are at 24 11 24 dollars and 11 cent for silver 1979 for gold both in the green Amongst all the currency issues, as well as banking issues, gold and silver has remained constant. They're monetary constant. And yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the good news of the day, people. <laughs> I just want to share something here. I told yeah. you I was going to share. Let me get, get it here. So this is the, uh, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. This is the quarterly chart of gold going back to like, uh, 2003 and uh if you look at uh, august 2011 uh that quarter uh, gold closed at uh 19 where is it uh 18 actually 18 oh it's this one here sorry uh july 2020 gold closed at nine uh 1974.68 so mm -hmm. right now we're near uh just above there so if we close our, our above 1975, this is the end of the quarter today. It's going to be the highest uh, quarterly close ever for gold. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's fairly significant. And silver as well. Um, I had a pretty interesting trend line coming in around 24, all the way from the top in, uh, you know, in 2020. So I, I think it's looking better. I think uh, people need to uh, be patient. And uh, keep uh, stacking if you can. Yeah, let me go back to my main window here. Let me, I got to maneuver some things around my side here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right, oh, 24 hours, that's very promising. I mean, it's small in nature, but when you look at the fact that this is activity that's being priced in the USD, there's no telling what's happening in the euro and the British pound and all those other currencies amongst uh, this global contagion is underway so all right uh, what else we got here let me get to some more subjects if i can get my windows together uh, let me minimize and close some things uh what else we got here uh it looks like the inflation talk <laughs> euro's inflation falls sharply sharply it's up sharply to 6.9 percent as energy costs recede so uh <laughs> yeah falling sharply huh <laughs> it's still rising by 6.9 percent right and uh, yes. I mean, what they've done in Europe and also in the U.S. with selling the uh, strategic reserves, that, that's brought down uh, energy prices. So, yeah, it, it's uh, it's still rising at 6.9. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, I've always said to my viewers that you need to really know the true definition of inflation because how that's how they fool people because inflation mm -hmm. is not the CPI. Inflation is the creation of currency uh, and credit out of thin air, which leads to higher prices. So um, I don't think it's uh, over by any stretch of the imagination, especially now with the uh, BRICS countries and the rest of the world outside the U.S. and Europe wanting mm -hmm. to diversify away from not just the dollar, but the euro, the British pound. There's going to be a lot less demand from, from uh, the rest of the world. And less demand means uh, higher government bond yields because uh, a, a lot of these countries, when they uh, accumulate hundreds of billions in reserves, what do they do? Well, they'll buy uh, the government bonds from those countries. Now uh, they're buying gold to keep gold mm -hmm. as a reserve. 
Yeah. And so think, I mean, I, so this is, this is just heading into spring, all these issues that we're talking about here. And the underlier to that is the debt issue, the budget deal that is yet to be ironed out. And so once again, our government's going to need, you know, I think, I think the whole Janet Yellen putting forth the budget proposal was 4.7 trillion or yeah. something like that. It's like, okay, who's going to be, who's going to be buying that? Who's, who's, who's in the market to take on more sovereign debt after all these currencies? We haven't <laughs> so, even spoken about the uh, other, uh, uh, you know, gorilla in the China, China shop, which is the uh, debt ceiling. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. So like it, it is, it's, 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 it's being set up to be a hell of a summer to say the least, because something's going to give the U S will not be able to plug all these holes and keep confidence. And I got a pit bull to decide to come give me some love. Oh. <laughs> Let me see. Get her on the screen here. Here, look, 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 right. Look, look, look. No. Okay. Okay. She's not, I, I she's have, not, Rudy's not here right now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> she's uh, that's my son's dog. But anyway, um, got to get distracted there. All right, let's get to some questions, man. We're about 30 minutes in. Let's get to some questions and uh, see what else is happening out here. I see a lot of talks about bricks and countries joining. Uh, let me bring some stuff on screen. If you see any, as always, Mario, highlight some stuff and I'll. Yeah, I'm having a look here. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Low Let blood. Me... Oh, I think uh, Rolf Steiner says, could you comment on something, please? <laughs> I don't know what he means. <laughs> but uh, Let me see here. Let me, uh, I gotta, where am I at? Uh, feel free. Yeah, I haven't seen right any there. questions so far. I'm just looking. Yeah, so for those who are, you get, if you got questions or anything that you want to share, latest developments or whatever, things worth keeping an eye on to bring to the audience, definitely let us know in the comment section and uh, we'll try to get on the screen and Brady, Brady let know about it. Brady says Rudy would be a snack. <laughs> I, I I think your dog is that bad. Is he? My, no, she's a lover. She's a lover. But yeah, she's never been around a real small dog, so she hates squirrels. <laughs> so she made mistake for a squirrel. Uh, Carlos um, Garcia. Carlos Garcia thinks the mining companies will get expropriated. Expropriated. Uh, I, I'm not too sure about that because it's a double-edged sword. You expropriate mm -hmm. the mining companies, you know, and uh, governments never run businesses well. And then uh, instead of getting uh, gold and silver and other minerals from mining companies, you get nothing. So I think there's a fine balance, really. Yeah. And so low blood pressure says breaking news. Texas to join the BRICS. <laughs> it's possible. You know. Oh, my goodness. That Texas, is funny. Texas could join <laughs> So again, you know, they, it was part of Mexico. <laughs> oh man! So, and that's where, like, okay, so we're going to hear more about countries deciding to, you know, submit an application to join. Okay, and so once all the the we all, all the countries we know about join, then we're going to have the countries we haven't talked much about, like you know, a lot of Central American area. Uh, what's his name? Honduras, uh, not but uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua definitely, if not already, because they're buddy buddy with China and Russia, so they're going to be on the list. And so a lot of the a lot of the the countries that use the even to use the U.S. dollar as its currency might end up shading towards the yeah. east as well. Therefore, they got to make some decisions because yeah. if their currency is dollars, then eh. I want to say yeah. something here because I think there's going to be a lot of uh, jingoism going on, and I'm not defending mm -hmm. China or Russia or Brazil or anything. Uh, yeah, not just in the U.S. but here in Europe. Uh, with this challenge to the dollar and the Western mm -hmm. system, they're going to say, "Oh, uh, you know, China is authoritarian." And, you know, I think it's going to—they're going to heat, you know, turn up the volume on that just to try to make uh, people not look at that. But uh, the reason why we talk about it is because we want people here in the West to be prepared for mm -hmm. what's coming. Um, you just have to go back to the UK back in the 50s and 60s. It wasn't a good time. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, the, the economy didn't do well after the UK lost its reserve currency status. But there will be opportunities. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Here's uh, something here from Wana Song. It says, uh, what do you think the subject of the conversation will be when Ursula and Macron go to China uh, this next week? <laughs> uh that's a great uh we, we, i would love to be a fly on the wall in that conversation because they they can't stop anything happening with the developments out east so it's going to be more so how can they not be ran over 
you know, or or how can they also comply and work along with as they might a as they themselves might end up shifting from the Western dominant system, even though they're part of it, into the new system. So yeah, I think uh, I mean I, I wasn't even aware they were going there, but um, be as it may, uh, what I think uh, they might be talking about is maybe trying to reassure the Chinese that uh, it's going to be business as usual between the EU and China. Uh, trade-wise and economically, because maybe China is not too sure right now because the U.S. is really ratcheting up the, uh, you know, the sanctions talk, the talk about Taiwan right now, and China yeah. might not be too happy. Uh, they want to know what the EU is thinking. So that's probably what they might talk about. Maybe yeah. maybe uh, the president of China is going to ask uh, Macron to respect human rights. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like they do they ask the chinese right yeah it, it's interesting that you know i haven't followed it this week just because all the bricks and the other developments but you know with the whole pension situation in france and the, the protests and i've seen video footage just and i've actually seen someone in like the little Times square area wherever they were meeting at a large gathering was that they had their camera pointing to us like you know but thousands of thousands of people and then they showed another phone where it said live from that same square it was just your casual people walking so they had a they had a fake or time lapse type photo to show that what nobody in that area you know in real time but there was just flooded so think about what's not being you know publicized uh, in reference to what's happening around the world so it's like yeah very interesting but next week will be very timely uh, Rope, uh, what else? Any other questions? China has a question. How can the French Navy attack China? It's a long trip from France to China. Yeah, I don't think their military capabilities or naval naval capabilities really all that. Even though I remember last couple of years ago, I think uh, France was set to build some warships for Russia, and then the U.S. got involved and they had to, you know, they had to sever those ties or cancel the contracts or something. So. Yeah, before the West got involved, things were looking very prominent. Uh, Buddy M50 says, on March 28, Asian countries discuss how to settle trade local currency instead of dollar. Two days later, Asian members, Singapore announces another increase in its gold. Oh, that's interesting. Singapore, they've been buying a lot of gold this year. I will uh, check up on that, actually. And uh, I, I saw a clip on uh, TikTok or somewhere uh, mm. of this uh, Western journalist, he sounded maybe Dutch or uh, German, and he asked a question to this uh, Singaporean diplomat uh, about China, and uh, it was really interesting uh, because this this uh, reporter said, "Oh, uh, what about the repression in China?" And uh, the guy really wiped the floor uh, with that reporter, and uh, so. <laughs> Not surprising. Here's uh, something from uh, just earlier this month. Singapore Central Bank quietly yeah. boosts its gold reserves by 30%. Yeah, I think I covered, tons. I covered that uh, in one of my videos earlier this month, but it, I don't know if they've increased it even more or if this uh, that viewer is talking about that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine they probably got some more. So a, a part of like divesting out of the dollars, like you got to do something with them. And so you can either send them back here, buy buy property, buy land, whatever, have it seized by the government, <laughs> or well, use buy gold, which is international is, sovereign currency. Huh? Well, you want something liquid, of course. You don't want to buy property. And the right. thing is, you just have to go back uh, to a regression theory analysis. What was why was the dollar the reserve currency in 1944? Well, because it had a lot of gold. So. Mm -hmm. it, it, Point. Some people don't look at history and they just look at gold and think it's a barber's relic, but it's the most important monetary asset alongside with silver. Silver is more of the uh, the masses money, I would say. It's just as good, though. And um, yeah, still stacking that as well. Yeah. Uh, what else we hear? Uh, I see here. I see. A, I see more of a, a more of a personal question here. But it says, question, what percent of your net worth is in metals compared to paper investments? <laughs> 150%. No, <I'm> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all personal. It depends on, you know, but I think you should have some. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
And so I like how, for example, like the some of the talking heads, you got some billionaires. I think uh, I can't uh, some billionaires to be you know interviewed on mainstream channels. They're talking about having a minimum of your, of your portfolio, at least you know you know five percent or ten percent gold. It's very small because they have you know stocks, equities, foreign this for whatever real estate. And so depending on you know where you're at and what you're looking to do with that now and in the future, determine what you have. But it's interesting how the mainstream pundits always talk about five, ten percent of your net worth in metals. I'm like, you know, like, oh, you know, okay. But then some say a little bit in crypto, a little bit Bitcoin. I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever approach your boat. I think in a, in the world where the monetary system is stable, uh, then yeah, I have five or 10%. Mm -hmm. But where we are right now, I'd want to have uh, the opposite. I'd want to mm -hmm. have a lot more gold and silver. Eventually, yeah. hopefully we'll be able to, uh, get assets that are still overpriced uh relative to gold and silver right now once that shifts here's a good question here that says what happens when the most of the u.s currency abroad comes back home to the usa and you know for me what i'm thinking like when i saw that the first thought was as i mentioned earlier about it's going to be a s potentially s slow gradual process of this alternative systems being brought online to where you'll have a moment where it'll be two competing networks, currencies, whatever, or more. And then throughout time, the dollar system will fade away. And therefore, along with that time frame, that's when all the reserves and dollars will be spent and liquid liquefied brought mm -hmm. back here. And so that could be that could be a much longer period of time, I think. I, unless a major event occurs to where it's a scramble to unload your dollars. But you know, I, I, my interpretation is being longer. Say again? I think it's already happening. <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah, and that's it's why, that's why the bond markets are going down, and yeah, you know, it's going up. The you saw the Chinese chart; they're selling their yeah. dollars. So his question, I, I think, when the dollars come home, it means they don't want to finance uh, the U.S. anymore. So they're going to sell a lot of debt instruments. You're going to have higher rates, uh, inflation, and the mm -hmm. dollar, the flood of dollars that will come to the U.S. will make. Uh, yeah, it's just like uh, issuing more shares. <laughs> it's mm. going to dilute the dollar <laughs> at home uh, because a foreigners are not going to be keeping it in a in the drawer. You know, the bonds. It's not in the drawer these days, but right. in, in the system, they they want to get rid of it. They're going to have to sell the dollars to do that. Right, and and that's where like I always wonder because uh, you of course you worked in the markets directly. Like you know, how do you actually know who owns the bonds? Who do you like? Because because so much stuff is you know either rehypothecated or just lent out. I mean, just so many things. Like so, how do you actually know who owns what in a system that's all digital already? Like how people there, how they're with the repo markets. They're you know they're giving they're giving you know treasures yeah. to the blue Fed overnight and da da whatever. They're yeah, not moving paper. Uh, D I mean, the DTCC, I mean, they, is that they know. the only source? Huh? And so is that the only source? Because uh, they, they keep record yeah. and keep track of everything. Yeah, there are clearing systems as well. Like in Europe, it's called the EuroClear, I think. You know, mm -hmm. they, they do keep track of who owns what, of course, you know. And, uh, but uh, um, not, at, not if you hold uh, a lot of dollars. A lot, I think in a lot of countries, people hold cash dollars outside the system that's difficult to quantify hmm. interesting okay a question from normal norm where he's it's a comment which is quite interesting uh right here the one about uh, five of my classmates have called me for buying gold silver recently here in the u.s everyone is getting scared uh i mean it's definitely this is getting people attention the banking situation is waking up a few people especially people yeah. who have large amounts above that two hundred fifty thousand, like you know, like you know, it's a scramble right now. Like, am I covered or what? Yeah, even if you have uh, less than two hundred fifty thousand, uh, what I think is going to happen is uh, because the central banks are uh, and the treasuries are covering all the deposits. You know, they bailed out the SB, SBB mil billionaires or mm -hmm. even multimillionaires. So yeah, I'm not surprised people are getting. Um, are getting uh, worried about it and um yeah we've been warning about this for for years and unfortunately there will be a lot of people who won't do it because they're gonna wait for gold to get back to 
uh, fifteen hundred dollars, and you know, I think that's Harry. That, that, that's Harry Dent's price. Harry Dent says going back down eleven hundred. Then that's from the well, that's be a great buy time. He had <laughs> seven hundred a few years ago. He kept saying seven hundred. I so haven't seen that yet. Hmm. Haven't seen that at all. Uh, what else you got here? Uh, where is the dictate? No, it was a question. Uh, will riots start in the U.S. this summer? Will food stamps, Medicare, and Section A be turned off this summer too? X, um, your guess is good as mine, man. But all those things you mentioned, they come from the government. So if the government giveth, the government can take it away. So you know, any moment they want to take it away, you know, it's it's up to them, and it will definitely cause chaos and pandemonium. So yeah, it's it's possible. Or, like as always, we're still anticipating some real false flags or cyber attacks, the internet down, grid down, or some crazy to get be thrown our way if things get really out of control. So, uh, what else we got here? Anything else? U.S. Empire loves stealing gold from other countries. Yeah, they're not going to steal gold from China or Russia, that's for sure. They ain't going to invade Russia or invade China to go take their gold. That'll be the, uh, the, that'll be the, end, of the end of this planet. They're going to nuke everybody on body. <sighs> Or any, I don't see any more questions. Are you getting ready to dial it back then? Um, what else is coming up? Anything? We got the new month tomorrow, April first, April Fool's Day. Well, <laughs> it's going to be April first. It's the April first. Yep. Well, it's the beginning of the year, isn't it? Yeah, because mm-hmm. if you, apparently uh, they used to have uh, thirteen months of twenty-eight days. So if you look at October, oct mm-hmm. eight. Mm-hmm. So eighth eighth month November. So if yeah. you go from October five month, you know if you go to April, that's the beginning of the year. So, and so like so I've heard I haven't. So a lot of the videos that show like a lot of history has been hidden from us, and how within the last hundred plus years they turn history upside down and remove stuff. And so, <laughs> yeah. And I and okay, I wish I would love to be able to ask ask some serious questions about that and get an answer with truth. Yeah. But then again, it may not be in his life. <laughs> uh, here in the UK, uh, April marks the beginning of the uh, financial year. You know, that's when uh, you start counting your taxes uh, for uh, to pay next uh, January. Is from mm-hmm. April 20, 2023 to April twenty fourth. That's mm-hmm. the tax year. Yeah. So I was April fifteenth. So it's like you know, same mm-hmm. thing. The same thing here. Well, um, so we'll have to just. Uh, Buckle down and, of course, enjoy life in the meantime, but, you know, keep your eyes on the metals and everything of that nature because all types of noise are going to be thrown our way. You know, the Trump situation might escalate to something next week. Who knows? But in the meantime, the Eastern Bloc is still pressing forward, working towards their objective of de-dollarizing yeah. the world and giving the world alternatives. So create alternatives for yourself. Just don't be stuck on one currency, whatever country you're in, because as we're witnessing, yeah, it's all debt-backed. And we're in transition to an asset-backed world so we got to figure out how to participate don't don't get uh stuck on the uh us against them think china versus us uk versus mantra just think of uh, what's best for you and your family and and, uh yeah (laughs) there you You must have to go outside (laughs) (laughs) all right well um as always mario it's great to connect with you my friend we have a great weekend and everybody appreciate you for joining us my 64 hit the thumbs up button show some love for the channel and we will see you guys next week because as always this is going to be something to talk about so be blessed be safe stay prayed up